Bonjour à tous, bienvenue à l'émergence, j'espère que vous allez bien. Alors, je m'appelle Anne-Christelle et ça me fait plaisir de vous accueillir aujourd'hui en ce dimanche. Le dimanche matin vers 11h en général, on, prend, on peut prendre un brunch et aujourd'hui, on a un brunch tout à fait spécial sur le, le plan de la nourriture de l'âme que l'on vous sert ici à l'émergence. On a un brunch en faveur de la journée internationale des femmes qui va avoir lieu demain dans le monde, partout à travers le monde. Et euh, on avait envie de vous, de vous proposer deux invités tout à fait exceptionnels pour l'occasion. J'y reviendrai un petit peu plus tard. Et avant de vous présenter nos invités, eh bien, quoi de mieux que de se mettre tous ensemble dans la même vibration, la même, la même énergie. Et aujourd'hui, ça va être une énergie très spéciale, mais nous avons aujourd'hui Lynn qui est avec nous pour nous offrir un de se retirer à l'intérieur et de faire une très très belle expérience de and to give us a beautiful experience of peace and serenity and so Lynn to you 
Alors, Om Shanti. To begin again. And so we're going to take a few moments to go within and to connect to the self and to create an atmosphere within ourselves to receive that spiritual nourishment. And so we just want to make sure everyone is comfortable. Tout doucement. And to connect gently, gradually, while we concentrate on the center of the forehead. Une douce lumière comme une étoile qui brille. And Just to visualize that tiny point of light, that star shining in the center of the forehead. That star is the soul that I am, that spiritual being. And I bring all my attention to that subtle point of light. And very gently, slowly, calmly, I bring my attention to rest. On the self, I feel completely safe. I feel light. I am a soul, a great soul. Calm, peaceful, completely still. I concentrate myself, I concentrate on that point of light. Je me laisse briller. Allow myself to shine, sparkle that I am, simply that being, a being of joy, filled with unlimited love. And I share qui se diffuse dans l'atmosphère. By that radiance spreading out into the atmosphere, I share this with all the participants, this inner beauty. Je me laisse être librement. Je suis une âme I allow myself qui a le désir profond de laisser s'exprimer who has this deep desire to express these qualities these virtues et de retrouver son pouvoir intérieur and to find once again that inner power a power that I lost, but that I can find by connecting to the source of virtues and powers. Qui rayonne constamment sur moi des vagues d'amour. I feel these waves of love, unlimited love radiating that fill my heart, l'être que je suis, that softens, sweetens this being that I am, and that give unconditionally. And I feel my own radiance grow 
become stable. Qui devient inébranlable. That becomes unshakable. Je suis moi l'âme. I am connecté. connected. À ma vérité. Connected to my truth. Connecté à la source. And connected to the source. Et je m'exprime. And I see myself, I know myself, and I express myself as I am. En toute simplicité. Completely, with simplicity. Et je vais poursuivre and mes activités. I can now continue with my activities while maintaining these sweet feelings Dans la joie and joy et and lightness. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Alors, merci uh, beaucoup, Lynn, pour ce très, très doux. Thank you, Lynn, for that very sweet commentary. And I think, like you, I experience a wonderful well-being to begin this activity. And so the International Women's Day is something that we feel very close to. We are here at L'Emergence on the international plane. This founder of our organization, Brahma Baba, that you see, perhaps, that he had this wonderful vision at the beginning of our organization, of the founding of it, but to attract as a group those who are interested in spirituality and the vision of Brahma Baba was to immediately put women in front. And this is something quite visionary at that time in India, down back in 1930s. And so now the Brahma Kumaris are continue, the organization continues to be managed by women at the head. And so now we're going to explore what is that feminine spiritual energy that is in fact present in each of us, men or women. And so what can this energy generate in terms of the growth of our spiritual spirituality? And so for this, uh, we had the thought to invite two women really phenomenal women who each of them have explored this aspect of the Shakti, this feminine energy, spiritual energy in the soul. And so I would like to today to first of all present to you Denise Lawrence, who perhaps you may already know if you have been to L'Emergence, you know, we've had the opportunity in Canada here um, to actually have her here as our national coordinator at one point time. And this is someone who is, in fact, the first woman outside of India who joined the Brahma Kumaris. So you can imagine that that would have been, uh, you know, to this journey of over 40 years of spiritual experiences um, with something. And so Janice is known uh, internationally as a, um, a speaker. And of course, with Zoom now, the possibilities of offering her talents to the world have increased multifold to share her wisdom, her knowledge with everyone. And this is someone who we very much appreciate for being able to join her, to connect spirituality and the aspect of psychology to bring them to look at how they both interact. And so now we'd like to introduce Isabel Gauthier. And so Isabel Gauthier also, we have Isabel, we've seen here at L'Emergence. She's in fact from Quebec. And, and so she actually, uh, when she lived in Toronto was where she started on this journey. 
received spiritual knowledge. And so like Denise, both of them uh, <laughs> have been based in England, but now both of them are in the south of France <laughs> for the moment. And so Isabel is also known for uh, facilitating many workshops, programs, talks, and also possesses a lovely quality of lightness, but also very dynamic speaker. And so I'd like to wish welcome to both of you and now over to you. Thank you. And in fact, I'd like to, to make fly and and to have to actually to speak about the Shakti, this power that Denise possesses. And in fact, um, Denise and Isabel are in the same place at the moment, although Zoom has really brought us into a very different reality. And so I would like to start by posing the question to Denise. And so, so that we all start in the same place. And so maybe Denise, could you clarify to us beyond the physical, what is this energy that we call feminine or masculine or Shakti? So what exactly are we talking about? How would you qualify that? And so, yes, of course, this energy is the energy of the soul, of this of spirituality. It's a subtle energy that comes from deep within each person. And in fact, when we use the body, we use physical energy for the tasks, everyday tasks. And so then we are in that energy, we tend to be more focused on the material, but behind that is the energy of the soul, which is more incognito and which, which is connected, which that energy of the soul is what connects us to the energy of the soul through what we call yoga which can then amplify this Shakti energy within the soul, this connection to the divine, which is, yes, is feminine, but it's, it's subtle and it comes from within the self. So we say feminine because we say it's coming from within, it's subtle, it's hidden. And so we tend to refer to it as feminine. And so it has this aspect of feminine quality. And this energy, which, uh, which can then through, go through the body and radiate out into the atmosphere, as we heard in Lynn's commentary, is this Shakti energy. This energy of the mind, of the spirit, of consciousness that acts through the physical, but it's the energy of the soul the soul, which is eternal, which is invisible, and sometimes difficult really to, to perceive, but we can perceive this energy. And so if I understand well, uh, the base, the foundation, the soul, itself its energy is feminine but when we speak about when we talk about masculine energy what are we referring to and so yes in fact it's more symbolical and so when we think about masculine energy we think more of that kind of forceful energy an energy energy that uses, uses matter to create, to destroy, to reinvent things. It's a more visible, concrete energy. 
And so, and so an energy that people can see, perceive more easily, whereas the other energy, which is more hidden within, is more you could think of like a, a perfume, a fragrance that nourishes an energy, we could say, that's more the energy, the presence of a being, a soul, of a person. And so that energy is like a woman is one who is more present, who is, whereas a man does things, if we were to be quite uh, stereotypical. And so these energies are actually quite complementary, and actually each person has both. But the being, the being is influenced by the body in which it finds itself. So, so for example, myself, I am in a female body. And so I would might more easily experience the feminine aspect more easily. But there are women who are more masculine and there are men who are more feminine. This, of course, each of us has both. And so the practice of spirituality is in fact to rebalance these two energies in order that one could say we become an androgen or harmonized. And so where we find the masculine and the feminine will emerge according to the situation. So sometimes you might need to be more feminine, sometimes more masculine. And for example, the person who knows both of these aspects of themselves, this is a person who is more free, who, who has, if you will, more unlimited horizons and who can understand himself and would not necessarily say I am a woman or I'm a man, but would more likely say I am a being, a being who can express, I can express myself in whatever way. So when I think of these two energies that are perhaps opposite, so for example, when I think of, for example, creation, these energies have to work together and exactly, yes. So uh, to be androgen in one's energy, this would be more to be in harmony. And so this would be more that, you know, like a dance in which both can dance together. And so what we believe though today, but in fact, we are tend to be more polarized you know, the relationship between men and women can almost be as adversaries. We are in a culture, you know, we've got, um, this is our, to be dominating, this is in a way our culture. So this is a culture you know, that we tend to suppress or we don't express ourselves because of that, the social condition is that for, especially for women, we had the expression, you know, keep quiet and just be beautiful. <laughs> and so we have less opportunity You know, so that they would have less opportunity to, you know, at one time, they would have less opportunity to do what they wished. But now the attitudes have changed. And so now we also have attitudes that have been projected on men, that you must be like this, that you must make money, that you are someone who protects. so that you are someone who needs to, you know, be at war or dominate, you know, needs to 
fight, you need to possess, you are someone who can, who has to, to govern or who has has these qualities and so often when when women will enter into a more masculine domain what she'll find is that she has difficulty because of this idea that it's not her place this is, shouldn't be here what is she doing here and so Often there's women who might, for example, become more masculine. Some women, other women will use seduction or whatever to find a place within these domains. But the essential element of this person in some, we could say, is diminished by the vision, the perception of our society that sees humanity as either those who are men or those who are women. And so we see perhaps, for example, women as a sexual object, a, uh, a thing, in fact. But now we really need to come out of this limited perception. And so to become less with this vision of the body and to work more with, because finally the, the soul is the person. This soul is aware that it's a soul and that the soul perceives through the five senses. And so, you know, there's a being who has, whether it be a feminine body or a masculine body, but it, what's important is to transcend these limits of the conditioning we've received from society. And very often there have been problems, uh, psychological problems, social problems, social problems, emotional problems have arisen because of these projections, these perceptions. And so the spiritual practice, the practice of spirituality can be very useful to undo these things that are in fact quite artificial. But, you know, people have, we have understood that these things, although real, there is something else that is behind, that is more subtle, that is behind this, which is more visible, that there's another reality. And so truly, I'm sure many of us can identify that in certain contexts like work, etc., there are situations where a woman might feel less appreciated and will have to make an extra effort to be integrated that also might include compromising herself and practice in spirituality and to develop more of this, this um, androgen, if you will, quality. But, you know, if we stay now in the context of work, well, you know, without necessarily uh, changing all of society, perhaps within the self, it's necessary to redefine success. For example, if you've defined success in a more masculine way by being efficient, producing results, you know, to prove, to show your the value that we can maybe think of as being more masculine, uh, a woman who consciously or unconsciously might take, who takes this definition of success might feel a bit caught, you know, that she might feel and it's exactly this that happens because in that time when women were, you know, looking for emancipation, were fighting for emancipation, and who were looking for equal pay for work, etc., to receive appreciation, etc. And so, in fact, she had to use a lot of energy to be, 
to be to win within that masculine domain at work because of course the tradition the tradition is that work was for men and women women would be inside the house something that was less visible would bring up the children she was the mother so she was like in indian they india they say that the mother is the first guru because she she gives that awareness of she gives them their awareness of themselves and so the woman was often traditionally at one time was more things that were more invisible hidden but now when we look at spirituality a woman that is tends to be more internally driven in contrast to a man so you know we're going to use the word shakti that she has a power a spiritual power that might bring fear uh, to a person a masculine person who has not developed that side of himself and so there is this for this reason that women who find themselves in these situations such as at work, that they have sort of diminished this capacity in themselves because we don't really understand, we don't see what exactly this is. And so I'm, I believe we could say that there is a revolution now currently happening because the world in which we live right now is changing. You know, and so for example, to redefine success, and so I think success for a woman who understands what she has on in her, this, this, these specialties or these qualities that might bring fear in others, that's not understood by others. Well, but for But this for her, this can build confidence in herself that she can learn how to express these aspects, these aspects through a spiritual practice, these aspects that are more subtle, that have a lot of value. She needs to reinforce within herself this idea that what I have in me is beautiful and valuable and significant and to no longer define herself by more restrictive definitions because we have all this a conditioning if you will a socialization for example of young young girls and so in the book, a book that was written some time ago, The Second Sex, all of these things are described. But it's a very deep understanding of this aspect of how we are socialized at a young age, that women, have the habit of, uh, yes, the book by Simone de Beauvoir, The Second Sex, we have this habit of taking on these definitions coming from society on ourselves. And so it's important that women find themselves within, from within themselves and reflect, who am I? What am I? What do I have within myself? that I will give myself that I will give myself permission to to reveal. And so women sometimes have a habit of hiding what they have within themselves, to hide it away and to diminish oneself, to to hold these things within and maybe having fear of their own power, their own strength. And maybe she finds herself isolated, but now I'm, you know, with the situation of COVID where 
everyone has is having a problem with isolation of being closed in and it's really the terrain of of women who are comfortable within themselves and so perhaps the situation has really given many the opportunity to allow them to see that they have within themselves that before had not been that it had been devalued which in fact is in fact very important and very important and significant an energy a presence that can result in the atmosphere remains on harmony balance and it's an energy that can make things go well work well and so it's as if We were focused too much on the contribution of the masculine or the of men rather than the contribution of the spiritual, the feminine. And so we each of us ourselves have to learn to value these things and not wait for others to accept it. But I'd also like to return to a point that you made many times, this force of the Shakti that perhaps can't be isn't welcomed or appreciated and in fact might be even rejected and can be diminished for that reason and so how could we together cultivate this inner power um, i mean so that we could continue to work together in harmony to with our own masculine energy and or feminine energy with those around us an example so we have the pharmacology industry pharmacy industry of pharmacy big pharmacy that we know well and so we have that traditionally women know how to care for others with massage with the knowledge of plants can use other all sorts of you know with perhaps herbal teas know how to would know how to at one time keep the family the village in good health because women have an intuition but this intuition has been devalued and so it has to be given back that value. And so, for example, we might say there, there aren't any women writers, but there are many. <laughs> but traditionally, we did not, for example, allow women because there were this, this prejudice, prejudgments. If, if the woman takes on this aspect, the masculine aspect of herself. And, and so women, uh, the earth, for example, is a symbol of women. And so we can argue with the idea. <laughs> and so, for example, a woman has this power, has the possibility of generating huge changes like the earth or the planet we should say the planet which we can say is we say mother earth and we can see the power for example at tsunami well uh, a female artist is quite extraordinary you know women that sing women that paint that dance it's quite wonderful if you look in for example classical ballet it's all about the women <laughs> the, the man is simply there who's there in kind of a secondary role because the man will lift the woman but it's the woman that shows the beauty of that particular art form of dance so yeah it's true and we talk when we think of beauty we tend to think of women 
the woman. For example, if you're building a house, you know, if you look at the structure, the uh, brick, the foundation, etc., as the the, fe the masculine elements and all the decoration as the feminine uh, element, and we could. And for example, a man that constructs a house, you know, we can think of all the things as those that things that are heavy and onerous is the masculine side and the feminine side is more the decoration. And so, but we could see it the other way around too, that everything that needs to be hidden, that's strong, the foundation is that which has to resist. And so when we look at this, this relationship between men and women, they need to work together. Because of course, the unit of humanity is a couple, you know, a woman and a man in harmony, who are able to, to really appreciate the totality of the other. You know, this could be love, this is beauty, but the problem, But, the, but we're in a culture that also tends to focus on an adversary, you know, but when we look in a more matriarchal society, there's much more harmony. Or when we look at, you know, uh, Aboriginal cultures where the women are the ones who manage, who are the chiefs of the village, and there we see it's very harmonious. And it's good, I believe, to return to this idea, this feminine energy, or to think of it as a way to harmonize these energies within a society that has become quite violent. And so the relationship between the people and the government, it's more violent, it's very violent. And this, this quality, for example, of the king, I mean, we aren't in the kingdom right now, but this quality traditionally of the king was the person who protected the person who nourished, who fed, and, and who made sure that everything was working well. They would have this quality. And the woman who who adds subtle energy to this, it's beautiful. But now, you know, we're in a situation, a global situation where there's overpopulation, there's climate change, there's so many wars, there's economic problems, exploitation problems, all sorts of situations. <laughs> Searching for the words. <laughs> and so how to resolve this. And so I believe that it's necessary to go within the self, whether you have a masculine or feminine body, doesn't matter, but to go within and to, to find, to look for this energy that brings things into balance, into harmony. Otherwise, we will be in an energy of, of battling, of conflict, obstructive energy, combative energy. So an energy 
we, we need an energy more so that builds, that soups, that uh, cares, and that brings things into a balanced state, into a well state. And I believe this energy, Shakti, this feminine energy, spiritual feminine energy is very useful this, for this kind of work. One of the aspects that I really appreciate in meditation is to be able to go beyond, to go beyond fears, to, be go, to go beyond strong emotions. We can describe the world right now as a world of conflict, actually a bit of chaos everywhere for different reasons, whether it's coup d'etats, where it's a government that defies their own country. You know, there's also the COVID and the way we've managed or the way they have managed. We blame other countries, other governments. We're blaming everyone. And so, of course, all of this creates emotions within the self that even if we try to balance these masculine and feminine energies, you know, but meditation allows us to go beyond these conflicting emotions and to see things from a stage where we're not being overwhelmed by these emotions, but where we can see the world where perhaps, you know, otherwise we're constantly seeing the world as a place of where can we get to use uh, violence to keep, to get. And so meditation allows us to have a stage of a state of contentment that allows us to go beyond these feelings of conquering and taking and so it can bring us into a place of harmony and so you know i would like to perhaps develop the this idea of the importance of meditation um, and maybe you have a practice that can help the soul to to go out of this drama of emotions and rather to find within themselves a state of more of harmony, giving, of understanding that's quite different. And so I feel that we have to come into a state of harmony between the self and nature, because nature right now is we're now in a culture that is more about dominating nature and to take out of it everything that is good, the wealth out of out of the earth. I mean, the earth is very generous, but at this moment, we're in we're actually in the process of destroying our planet. And so the planet is reacting, of course. So a person who was really in sync with the the, the earth, the, the phases of the stars, the, 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 the moon, and of course a woman tends to be naturally in sync in with the seasons, with the moon. A woman is in these in touch with these cycles you know, of, of the times of harvesting. In fact, it's actually the woman that at one time who would, you know, be the one to make sure there'd be enough to eat the following year because she works with the earth. She doesn't look to try and dominate the, the planet or dominate others. And so this feminine aspect is in one in which we look to enter in harmony with others without trying to dominate them. We are more so looking to be in harmony. And so when we look at spirituality, we look at it as, as this ability. When we look at the philosophy of karma, it's the power to use that philosophy. And it's the power of purity, of, of gentleness, to really understand who is the person truly, the one who is that behind the mask and what is the meaning of life. And so a woman is close 
to birth and close to death. Sometimes I might say to men who say that a woman is uh, weak, and she'll reply, she, I will say to them, could you give birth to a child? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you could do that because it's not so easy. And so to be able to nourish a child from your own body, you know, it, it really makes us enter in a very different relationship with a child when you're so close to you rest so close to the seasons to life to death what is the cycle of life what is life i think that women are much more in contact with this and with this energy this feminine energy whether it's with men or women it allows us to enter into a relation a harmonious relationship with nature and this, this allows us to return to, to the essentials in our own, to the essence of our own nature, because, because in that is really, in that essence is why are we alive? And of course, that is to know who we are and to be who we are simply and fully to fully be who we are. And so it's not meant to be a combat, a fight, a war, because usually at the end of a war, there's nothing. Nothing is left to fight. And so it's another energy. And so... You can think of this as an energy that is about returning to the original, to that origin of the self, to, to find, to be once again at the very heart of oneself, because there are many whose hearts are closed, are frozen, <laughs> the feeling that they are not free to express themselves, that were limited, We're limited by aspects that I should be that which people I am. Maybe physically beautiful and whatever is within myself, which is less easy to see. So it tends to become diminished. And so to enter into contact with nature, with one's own nature, and to be in contact with things that are more subtle, more intangible, more invisible, and so to be in connection with these aspects allows us to perhaps reinvent, recreate, or to reemerge this essence. And so, the feminine has the ability to give a rebirth to the soul. For example, this idea of the divine, of, of God. This, I, normally the idea is that God is a, a man, and if he's not a man, this being that is God is not human. It's not a man. It's an intelligence, it's very subtle, that is beyond humanity. And so a man, a human, tends to be focused more on the masculine. Well, because of this idea of power, tends to focus on that masculine forceful power because the feminine power isn't something we associate with being powerful. So we'd have to look at these aspects of God, of, of intelligence beyond the human that will then bring us into a state that is both masculine and feminine. In fact, we have to go beyond masculine and feminine to really connect with the idea of what is the divine that we understand perhaps all these aspects are there, but they're complementary and they're 
in harmony because we are divided. And when you enter into a spiritual practice, this is all is to bring these conflicting aspects together to bring the mind into a state of oneness, the body and being into a state of oneness. To have that dance between the body and the spirit of the mind and nature and the universe, everything that's beyond, if you will, to bring it together. Because it's all a machine, you know? And if you're very physical, you only understand one aspect of this machine, if you will, this these elements. You don't know what's beyond beyond death and before birth. And so this dimension of existence, we think that it doesn't exist when you're in this very masculine physical consciousness. And so to put these two together, to put back together the, the feminine masculine is to put back together the visible and invisible. And so in meditation, specifically in Raja Yoga, it is important to not just center on the soul, but also to explore a relationship with God. And in fact, I had just, you know, asked myself this question, is God feminine or masculine? <laughs> is, is God, a, you know, that there are women who want to take the identity of God as feminine. And perhaps it's both these things doing this dance. And so sometimes we allow ourselves to, to be in a relationship with God that can be more masculine, more feminine. And so how can we in meditation, how can we think about taking this power from God, using this idea of masculine and feminine? How would you describe that? And so first of all, we need to think about that a person that is, first of all, taken as either a man or a woman. For a man who is taken as a man is that God will be someone who gives strength. And, and so for a woman for who will see God as, as a man, will see God as someone who will protect her. And so in meditation, we first have to understand that being is not neither is neither masculine nor feminine but is in fact both <laughs> is at sometimes masculine at sometimes feminine because in fact uh, the soul is a point of light and a point of light does not have a gender and so the soul is beyond gender and so that person will need uh, support if you will sometimes of masculine sometimes of feminine and so god with an intelligence, a being who is completely balanced in terms of the masculine and feminine. And a human being is someone completely in a state of unbalance, imbalance. And so a word that's, that exists between the Hopi uh, Aboriginals in America, I don't know if I can say that word, Kayaneskatsuki. Kayaneskatsuki. That is to say, La destruction that destruction will happen through imbalance. So the, the aboriginals are always looking for balance, always to be in that balance. And so that the village be in balance with itself. And when they're not in, when they are in a state of imbalance, and so when things, you know, we're in the state of imbalance that reflects or is reflected in this attitude uh, that has been projected towards God, that energy, that God is an, a masculine energy. For example, in Catholicism, there is this idea of the Virgin Mary, who is the, uh, who is the queen, 
who has also been completely removed from Protestant practice or tradition. And in most religions, they're much more masculine. The prophets are masculine. The popes are masculine. And so this energy of the spirituality is is rather expressed through the masculine. But finally, in fact, the energy of God is completely balanced, masculine and feminine. And if God, if humanity, sorry, if humanity was to once again be able to connect to this, this balanced, this balance that exists in God, the human life would be much more harmonious and in state of balance because we would then be in harmony with this energy that is God's energy. And of course, the word goddess. But people have fear of this, of perhaps taking from this feminine energy of the goddess because perhaps you need to be strong, you need to, might bring, and so we've tended to diminish this idea of the feminine because that they cannot manage the world, but it's perception of things that is not right and is not correct because we are much more in a state of protection when we're in balance and so things work better when they're when they're complementary and rather than a adversarial kind of relationship so for example we look at this conflict between those who have different color of skin between men and women different ages we're in a time of so much polarization, state of such imbalance. And in fact, we have a great difficulty because of this difficulty in terms of these elements that create conflict. And so today, if there were two things perhaps today that you could recommend to everyone who has had difficulty of facing or managing, for example, in their career or in their family relations or whatever it may be. So would you have maybe one or two things that you could recommend to everyone? I am understanding how important balance is. And so is it that balance can, or meditation can help you to find that balance in yourself? And I think for women, that she needs to go beyond this fear of being who she truly is, because often women will But she will kind of hold herself back. She will not go completely to the very extent of her capacities. And so it's very important to assume and to, to recognize her destiny and to have more confidence and belief in herself and to find her voice. And to have more confidence in her own intelligence and in her you know, intellectual, emotional, of the heart, that she has the ability to catch, to catch more subtle aspects. And for men, to not have fear of women who have claimed their power. And so, because there is such polarization at this time, 
But now at this time, in fact, there are many movements in the world where men and women, on one side, it's very polarized, but on the other side, there are people who are who are beginning to, to see the person, the person beyond the body. And I think it's very important to continue to continue this. Because there are two energies. There's an energy that is about a complement to that they complement each other, the masculine, feminine, and that they, the other side, they destroy each other, or they are in conflict with each other. And I feel that meditation is very important to welcome the these power, this power that comes, in fact, from God, this energy that's an energy of light that has a lot of power that can allow things to work better, to be in harmony. And we really need this energy. We need this power, this quality of power, and to strengthen ourselves in this. And now, you know, let's say we are entering into a, a spiritual path or practice. And so we are taking responsibility for what we do, for the emotions, and for whatever conflict. And so we will actually experience this duality in the self. And so what do you recommend for someone who, in seeing this, is seeing this and thinking, I shouldn't do this, or I should have more of this. And, you know, when someone's looking, how can they try? Yeah, that we can in fact all do the right thing, you know. But sometimes we're almost seeing two things in ourselves. And so it's not always easy to see what, you know, as we're seeing others, what they're doing. Should I do it like that? you know, or when we're seeing all these examples around ourselves, but to rather have this introversion. And as we go within the self, and so it is an education, you know, what does it, what does it mean to be? So it begins with an education. What is this power of the soul? We've been speaking of Shakti, but it's power. And so there's lots of power. And so it's very important to have the power to, to remain, we could say, not overwhelmed. Because if we're overwhelmed by emotions, uh, we'll make a wrong decision. But if we are have the power to remain calm and independent of our emotions, this will be, give us much more possibility of uh, being able to remain free uh, and to hear that moral code within the self. And so we need to have a lot more confidence in that inner voice rather than the voice of the, the morality um, of the society, opinion of society that can be quite counter to that inner voice. And so we need to have, we need to have confidence and that maybe we don't feel it's possible, but yes, to have confidence that it is. And so you need an education for this, to be able to do this. And so for myself, my, if I can say my, my life uh, goal or aim is to be an educator of these things and to facilitate, make it easier for people to, to understand these things. And so now with the internet, you know, for example, if there's women who are perhaps stuck at home, they can access uh, through the internet, they can access an education that it's not necessary that they go to an institution or a school. 
booklet, you can actually find an education. What does it mean to be me? And to really take on who I am, to reaffirm myself and to have the confidence in myself the subtle aspects of myself and to very more easily connect with my men and to become who I am and to not be something fabricated by someone else. So I am aware of the time. And so I'm going to find out if it's time to ask, to take the questions of others. And so, yes, if we can take a few moments for question and answers. And so after that, we can ask Denise to give us a meditation commentary that will allow us to go into the experience of the Shakti that she has so well described for us. Okay, so... And so if you have any questions, please do use the um, chat for that. And so perhaps to, um, to just underline that there are many things that have really touched us in this presentation of Denise, but this aspect of balance has really um, this aspect of balance has been so well underlined by you and that we are actually in a time that's of such such imbalance, you know, in terms of this aspect of uh, Shakti and feminine energy that's in every soul that's there for us to protect, to, to reconstruct ourselves, that in fact now in this time of COVID and of disability, uh, multiple levels that has is happening around the world. I think we really need to, um, to return to this energy, more subtle, more sweet, more this energy within the self, but that to connect to this is such a powerful thing. And so it's so a really beautiful, um, and so this beautiful thing of what's happening on the power now. And so I really appreciated also the uh, to underline this aspect of how women really need to take back this power within themselves. And, and also that men do not need to have fear of this, but rather to sustain it. Des questions qui ont émergé entre temps. Homme chantier, il y avait une question plutôt. Pourquoi vouloir identifier forcément une qualité comme féminine ou masculine? Oui, ça c'est. I was just sharing. There was a question earlier. Of why do we have to identify either with masculine or feminine quality? And of course, Denise is in. Uh, sharing. So men and women, you know, we use these words that this is masculine or this is feminine. And so we've created, this has created a polarization, such a split within us. And so finally, courage is feminine, is masculine, feminine. Fear is can be masculine or feminine. I mean, in fact, finally, and so in fact, it is body consciousness has made it so that by using it, by operating in this, that people have taken on the habit of identifying things. We have this habit that this is masculine or this is feminine. But now I believe we need to go beyond to the being and think of the being, a human being, and that we need to develop this habit uh, that we can develop qualities of sweetness, these qualities more visible and tangible and also invisible and intangible, and use the words masculine and feminine for these two qualities or these two sides of the spectrum rather than self-identifying and as perhaps 
question. And so finally, of course, we do have body, and I'm sure there's nobody who don't doesn't want to have a body. Even Stephen Hawking, who of course does not really have the use of his body, but but he still takes himself as a man even though he's using technology for communicate. So it's it's in your head, really. And finally, each human, if we go into spirituality, we go into this idea of reincarnation. So reincarnation, it's an idea, it's a very interesting concept because it really gives us If it gives us the, the that which which we can use, that we can really understand ourselves as women and as much man, and of course, depending on which body I find myself in at any moment, because the body is like a, a house, and so whatever machine or body I'm, I'm occupying the soul is inf influenced by the gender of the body and also influenced by what we call sanskars or these imprints within. For example, there are many people who have a feminine body and yet they think of themselves, I am more on the side of a male. I'm more male than female. There are others who have a, a masculine body who really, who say to themselves, I am more comfortable, I'd be more comfortable in a female body. This idea that it is true that the body influences the soul, but there are other aspects that are more subtle, more within the, the being that influences the soul much more than the, the gender of the body. And so this is a phenomenon that we see very much in the world today, the influence of those sanskars. And so there are people who are really questioning their identity because our culture identifies us as either man or woman and not as a being who which has qualities, sometimes male, sometimes female, because culturally, we have created this division, but it's an artificial division because the being is androgen. But this being, because of culture, has become uncomfortable with the idea of being androgen. If you say to someone that the objective of your life is to have a balance between masculine and feminine and to become androgen, they would find that frightening. <laughs> but of course, that's actually what they need to do. And so in fact, there was a question that was given uh, a, a sub question to this question. So this courage that you spoke about for the female or the courage, male courage or patience, all these different qualities. Can you give some examples of this? What does that mean when we say male courage or female courage? Well, finally, it's a question of love. This idea that love allows us to open us to another person because it requires as much courage for a man as for a woman. Fear. When you are in a situation, a dangerous situation in front of death, facing death, for example, or uh, attachment of a fear of losing, losing a support of one thing or another, something that's important. And so, of course, finally, it's the same thing, whether man or woman. Perhaps the expression will be different. Maybe a man will not want to cry, and so he becomes violent. And the, the woman doesn't want to be violent, so she'll cry, but that's cultural. But if we remove that cultural, that layer of culture that obliges us to either be male or female, and we find the, the, if you will, the very raw 
original feelings. It's what the soul is feeling. And the soul is expressing their reaction at things. But the reaction is modified by culture. So there's that raw emotion and then modified by culture. And so which would we prefer? Would we like a culture that divides us in two? Or would we prefer a culture that we are more complementary rather than adversarial? Because men that allow themselves to cry when they'd like to cry, or a woman who kind of, you know, allows herself to cry out if she wishes. And of course, very much in the domain of, uh, of feelings. Men, because of culture, are much more repressed. The culture does not give them the permission, does not allow them to feel things if they wish. Or if another culture, that gives you all sorts of possibilities. The culture is a layer that is on one side artificial, on the other side, it's very strong. And so to what, to what degree am I able to be me? And to what degree do I accept myself being, if you will, formed or molded by the environment? And there's many schools of psychology that say it's the environment, some say it's in your genes, so, so many things. But in spirituality, we, we speak of sanskars, imprints. We think we, part, we speak of destiny. And especially we speak of the soul that is beyond all genders, even our language. Yeah. And so within the language of French, there's masculine, feminine, and in Germany, there's three genders, and in English, there's none. And so, and so in this language, in French, there's he, she, and there's no, there's no gender that's neutral, that's not masculine or feminine. And so... And so we tend to think of God as masculine. We even say ma mankind. We don't say humankind, we say mankind, and we mean everyone. So of course, the language has been fabricated, is artificial, it's been created by a culture where the masculine is, is dominant and the feminine is dominated. And so we see what that has, the problems this has created that we need to now manage. And so we have another question, which is asking if Denise would like to answer briefly. <laughs> but there is such a huge spectrum in this. That what is the difference between emotion and feeling? And so, yes, my English is perhaps not as good as my French. I'm oh, sorry, my French is not as good as my English. And so there's sensibility, there's emotion, feelings. There's so many. The, the, there's so many things that have a more negative aspect connotation between so there's this whole spectrum between the positive and the negative and so there's perhaps just a convention to say that emotions are more um, they're more violent they're more negative and feelings are more positive what is the convention what is important is to accept, is to accept the whole gamut of sent of feelings, the whole spectrum. And when it means, when it's the moment to act, it, to become aware of the law of karma and, 
and to limit our actions, limit those actions that could be harmful or harmful to another person, and to rather understand that my freedom, you know, to see where my freedom ends and where the other person's freedom begins, and that's a whole education to see the impact of our actions. And so we need to absorb ourselves a lot of spiritual power to be able to manage these emotions. And so these to really be able to control and to not allow ourselves to be controlled or moved by uh, emotions that could be harmful if put into action. And so it is a whole study that we need to have of these things. And of course, in schools today, we do not have that possibility. All right, thank you. And so Denise, uh, would you be able to take us into a meditation now to allow us to live this beautiful element of the Shakti. And so it is the spirit Sur un point de lumière. It is a point of light Oudla. beyond physical. Sachant qu'à l'intérieur de vous, knowing that within, within the self, within you, is as brilliant. I am light. Je suis energy. I am energy. Conscious energy. I am aware of my existence. Lam. Ne peut pas mourir. The soul cannot die. Soul is immortal. Mon existence. My existence is forever. Cette énergie. This energy has an enormous potential to express itself. L'âme a perdu beaucoup de it is an energy that has become weak within the self. The soul has lost so much of its power It is now time to find again that Shakti, that power, that inner power that allows us to be who we are. Mon être est plein d'amour. In order that my being be full of love, Je suis I am motivated by love, by, by truth, pour love for myself. Love for humanity. Mm. 
mes pensées, my thoughts, mes paroles, my words, mes actions, and my actions sont motivés. are motivated Par cet amour. by this love. Qui veut que tout est would like things to be well, to make sense. That is what the soul wants. Je suis un être. I am a being. Filled with all powers. Le pouvoir de la pureté. The power of purity. D'être toujours en phase avec moi-même. To be always in harmony, in sync with myself. And to be in harmony with the universe with nature. Je sais ce que c'est d'être. I know what it is to be a human being. Un être humain dans son pouvoir. Be a human being in it their power, luminous, vertueux, extraordinaire, the bridge and opening an extraordinary that in which I affirm my existence. Et tout ce que je fais, and all that I do, mon sentiment de qui je suis, reflects the feelings, these feelings of who I am. Un grand merci à Denise. Huge thank you to you, Denise, for this experience. We are now very much moved closer to being able to express our inner Shakti and this marvelous. Uh, aspect of ourselves and thank you as well Isabel to have played the role of the interviewer with these really beautiful questions and reflections that you brought today we have a little gift for you <laughs> and so uh, we can't perhaps offer you physic we would usually give this physically but of course now in all the centers of Raja Yoga, we now offer a blessing, if you will, a very auspicious uh, thought for you. And so we are now going to begin with Denise. And so for you, Denise, we know you, we recognize you, of course, as a Shakti. And so thank at your surprising power to co concentration, you are a soul who is crowned with success. You are re remain, you know how to remain stable and unshakable. And of course, this is definitely a quality you have, especially today for sh sharing this. And now for Shakti Isabel, what do we have a thought for you especially? And for you, Isabel, 
You are powerful and introverted. You love the sweetness of silence, which brings you close to yourself, others, and the supreme. And so for our two Shaktis, and of course we are all the Shaktis, all of us, and so we have a, a thought for everyone, for all of you. Alors, vous êtes so, uh, you are a special soul. You connect with love to the truth of your pure heart. And like a precious jewel, you shine with the light of all virtues. And so, you know, it's so beautiful to connect to that purity. So a special soul, you connect with love to the truth of your pure heart. And like a precious jewel, you shine with the light of all virtues. A big thank you to all your, you, all of you for your presence today. And so just to share a little bit with you some announcements. And so there are those who would like to know more about this mystery of meditation. And so we will have another course starting on the 25th of March. Another course is starting, I believe this will be in French. And so you're most welcome to register. And I'd like to also let you know about another program we're offering this coming Sunday. We're in rather a very auspicious time. And so we've got a very timid, very shy, spring is very shyly trying to emerge in Montreal. But of course, for the soul, we could say it's the same thing. We are in this period of a festival called Shivratri, which is coming in India, but we India, but we'd like to underline it here. We'd like to celebrate it here, which will allow us to focus on for the soul moving from the darkness to the light. And if and actually Denise really um, spoke about this emergence of the Shakti of the light. And so we will explore this in an evening of experience next Saturday at six o'clock in Montreal. So you're all most welcome to join that program next Sunday, the 14th at six o'clock in the evening. And so please uh, be free to also, if you'd like to support our activities, if you join on our website, we have a page where you can make contributions. And of course, your contributions are most welcome. So we actually will finish with a song in English, but will allow us to re-emerge this power of the Shakti in each one of us. And so it's to stand up, Shiv Shakti, to, to stand up and take your place. And of course, it's this spiritual energy and supported by the divine. And so I invite you all to shift to gallery view and open your cameras so that we can all have the opportunity to see each other to see each other, these true sheep shaktis. And so we salute to all of you and we will see you soon. And so a very big thank you to Isabel and Denise. of courage 
She who spins and weaves and cuts the way. She who occupies sacred space. Stand up, Sheep Shakti, take your stage. Stand up, Sheep Shakti, come the rage. Stand up, Sheep Shakti, turn the page. Take what is on.